Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Lens Blur Node. And the Lens Blur Node is another DaVinci Resolve effect available within Fusion. Unfortunately, it is studio version only. So let's go ahead and jump in our footage. And we've got this uh, footage with some light. And if we wanted to add some bokeh on this, we could easily do that with the Lens Blur Node. So let's go ahead and add a Lens Blur. We're going to add that in our little note tree. Now, you would want to probably go in here and mask all this stuff off. So only our lights are being affected. But uh, for this demonstration, I'm not going to do all that stuff. Plus, this footage would probably be a nightmare to mask her off. But we'll go ahead and uh, look at our lens blur. So up top, we have three options for our shape type. And by default, it's set to real apertures. So it's going to use real shapes of apertures. So we have triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, and octagon. Now I'm going to switch this to triangle so we can see what's going on. Under aperture shape, we can select this preview shape so we can preview what our shape is doing. So we can adjust it however we want. And this is what is actually applying that blur. So we're not necessarily blurring the image. We're applying these bokeh effects or these lens shapes to add blur to our image. So if I uncheck this, you can see as I change my blur size, those are getting larger. So under speed controls, we have three options. We can select full, but if your computer is having trouble uh, rendering some of this stuff, you can switch it to half or quarter. And we're going to leave it on full for now. But under controls, we have blur size, which is going to control the size of that blur on that shape. We have blade curvature, so it's going to change the actual shape of your shape. We have rotation that's going to rotate your shape. Anamorphism that will apply anamorphic effect to that shape. Chroma shift, which will shift you from reds to your blues on the chroma sides. You can adjust your highlights up or down. We have the ability to apply oppidization. And what this is going to do is it's going to add some of those rings we see in our bokeh effects from our lenses. So if I decrease this and uh, let's go ahead and change our shape to something we can see this better with. So we'll select hexagon. And as I minimize this, you can start seeing those rings appear inside our little bokehs. And lastly, we have catadioptric, which is going to simulate the bokeh that we get from like our mirror elements from our catadropic uh, telescope type lenses. So if it increase this, it's going to make those a little sharper and a little more prevalent. So our next shape type is creative and under creative, we get different shapes. So we have a heart, a star, starfish, starburst, petals, lips, eye, a droplet, and a leaf. And our speed controls are the same for this shape type as well as all of our controls. So we can still change everything like we could in our other one. Our last shape type is external input. And this requires an external input to be input into this green input of our lens blur node. So we could bring in a star shape and let's get a S render. And if we input this into our lens blur, now we're using that star shape to apply our blur. So on our shape or whatever we bring in, if we alter it, it's going to alter the look within our uh, lens blur. So in anything we do, if we uh, rotate it or do anything, it's going to change that. And then within our lens blur node, we uh, lose some of this extra stuff, but we can still change the scale the rotation, the anamorphism, 
We can still add chroma shift. Here we can still adjust our highlights. Now we do have extra options under our speed controls if we're using that input. And in addition to quality, we can uh, change our horizontal crop and our vertical crop. And as far as what you could bring in, you can bring anything you want. So I could technically bring in a uh, logo. I'll bring in my logo, input it. If I go to lens blur, I change the scale. You can see we've actually got a logo as our lens blur. And one other thing that's pretty cool is this preview shape will actually output. So if I select preview shape and uh, let's uh, get our scale up there. If I take this output and go into our media out, if we look at our media out, we're actually getting that preview shape. So this is a simple, easy way to add some chromatic shift to stuff like this if you need to do it really fast. So we can shift it make a keyframe, go to the end, shift it. Now we've got some animated uh, chromatic shift going on on our logo, nice and simple. So that is the lens blur node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.